Welcome. So we are going to talk about alligators, alligator research, alligator biology. Alligators are one species of crocodilians that we have here in Florida. And one of the species that we study through our crocodilian research program. And here we have one of our research biologists, Colin, who's going to talk to us a little bit about alligators. Hey, how's it going, Michelle? My name is Colin McKevitt. I'm a biological scientist with our crocodilian research program here at the Lovett Lab in Gainesville, Florida. So Colin, I see you're holding an alligator there. What exactly are alligators and where do they live in Florida? Sure, so an alligator is a large species of carnivorous reptile that's native to us in Florida here. They uh, belong to a group of animals called crocodilians, which includes alligators, caimans, crocodiles, and gharials. And this group of organisms actually has a really, really long ancient lineage. You can trace the ancestors of crocodilians back to the Triassic period, which is over 200 million years ago. And this group has existed for about 80 million years. Alligators as we know them have been around largely unchanged for approximately 8 million years. And they really haven't evolved much and changed in terms of their biology and their body plans. They still have a large head with a powerful jaw, an elongated reptile-like body with four short limbs, and then a long and powerful tail that helps them swim. Can we see uh, him um, up close? Sure, yeah. So you can check out his Wow, little he looks like a baby. How old is he? Yeah, so this guy is probably about a little under a year old, so we would call him a hatchling still, not quite a yearling. And so alligators are found from the southeast uh, all the way to southeast Oklahoma and east Texas, that's the western side of their range, uh, all across that southeastern stretch from North Carolina to Florida in the east. And here in Florida, they exist in every single county and in the great majority of freshwater bodies throughout the state. They're our official state reptile here in Florida. So how big do alligators get? That one's so tiny. Yeah, this guy's still probably under a year old, so he's like probably less than a foot. A slightly larger one we can check out here. So this guy is still what we would call a sub-adult, so he's a little over four feet, uh, but he's definitely not reached uh, reproductive maturity yet. They usually get to above six feet, and that's when they start breeding and they're reproductively mature, but at the high end of their, their size, females will get to at and a little bit above nine feet, and the big males, as they get older and older, they can get, you know, upwards of 13, 14 feet. But anything above 14 feet, you're probably getting close to the record size for an alligator out here in Florida. Crocodiles and alligators, they're similar, but also different. What's the difference between them? Well, they're actually two separate species. And here in Florida, knowing the difference can be a little bit important because we're the only state that actually has alligators and also American crocodiles that are native reptiles here. They look pretty similar in appearance, but once you know some key differences between them, you know, telling the difference can be pretty easy. An alligator has a much broader and rounded snout, so you can kind of see on this guy, it's almost like a U shape from the top down. Uh, it's not very pointed. On a crocodile, they have a very V-shaped narrow snout. So similar in length, but the shape is really, really different. We also say that alligators have overbites. So you can kind of see here, he's got his mouth closed right now. And you can see the top teeth on the teeth on this top jaw. They're kind of hanging over, but you can't oh, see yeah. any of the teeth on his bottom jaw. So in a crocodile, even when their mouth is closed, you'll still see some of their bottom teeth exposed coming up especially the fourth tooth on their lower jaw, they have a little notch in their skull. So the fourth tooth is really, really prominent and protrudes outside of their mouth, even when it's closed. Alligators in general are a much more freshwater species. Um, they're able to inhabit some brackish habitats, but really for the most part, you know, lakes, rivers, associated wetlands. Whereas crocodiles are much more uh, tolerant of saltwater environments. So they're out in the ocean, they're out down in the Keys, and in the brackish, you know, salt water that surrounds that area. And I guess the only other one that we can use to distinguish the two can be color. So this guy's getting a little older. You can see that his back is getting really dark, very different than that hatching I showed you earlier. So he's getting almost black. Whereas in a crocodile, as they get older, they're a lot lighter. So we would call them kind of light gray, sort of olive tone to their skin. That could be a tough one if you're not looking at adults, but for the most part, alligators are dark, with some light coloring and crocodiles are light with, you know, darker stripes, a little bit of dark coloring. 
How do they survive so well? What are some survival adaptations that alligators have? Sure, they have quite a few, actually. Uh, you know, it's no wonder they have a really long lineage and ancestry, and it's because they're so well adapted to their environment. So they have a really long and strong, powerful tails that help them in their amphibious environment. And all their feet are webbed. So they're really powerful swimmers. The dark skin on their back gives them a bit of camouflage. I'm sure you've mistaken an alligator for a log at some point if you've ever been out, you know, kayaking somewhere. And their entire back is covered in these strong bony structures called osteoderms that essentially armor them. I've actually got one here. We can take a look at that. So you can see the strong armor on him, but underlying that is sort of a bony structure that's just below the skin. And it gives rise to that kind of, you know, hard armor-like stuff on their back. Wow, those are actually bones. Each individual bump is a bone. Wow. Right. Those bones, you know, are great for armor, but they're also really good at storing and uh, absorbing heat. So we sort of loosely call them little solar panels on their back. Definitely helps them as they're a cold-blooded reptile, so they can really warm up, digest their meals. And, you know, the location of their eyes, their nostrils, uh, that's no accident. They're able to have their eyes above the surface of the water as well as their nostrils while leaving the rest of their body submerged so they can be pretty sneaky when they're looking for prey or actively hunting. They have, they have special adaptations too for when they go underwater. So their ears behind their head here have flaps that close off once they go under the water. Uh, their nostrils close up tight and at the back of their mouth is a valve so that once they submerge, they're able to open their mouth without having any risk of getting water in their lungs or in their stomach. They've got normal eyelids like you or I would, but they also have a, an extra set of eyelids we call nictitating membranes. So once they go under the water, a little transparent lens will come front to back and it will allow them to see in you know murkier water habitats without damaging their eyes. So once they're underwater, they also have these things called integumentary sensory organs. We call them ISOs for short. So you can kind of see them on him. All along his mouth, those little dots everywhere, each one of those is a small little sensory cell. And what they tell him is if there are any little vibrations in the water or, you know, minute chemical changes, an alligator, once they're submerged, they're still able to kind of feel around and hunt for prey, even if they can't see them too well, they can feel them really well. Yeah, and their jaws are really powerful. Um, you know, at times people thought they were maybe the most powerful jaw in the animal kingdom. I think since then they've been dethroned by saltwater crocodiles, but they're up there. They're way up there. So yeah, we usually tape them as a precaution. And it's, it's sort of funny for such a powerful jaw, they're really, really able to, you know, crush down with a lot of force, but opening their jaw back up is really, really difficult for an alligator. So they just don't have this powerful set, you know, opposing those crushing jaws. So their teeth are really interesting. They're actually totally hollow. And an alligator is continuously growing teeth uh, throughout its whole life. So the way that they grab prey with their strong crushing jaws, it's usually pretty rough on their teeth. Even as their teeth are growing, you know, underneath each tooth is another tooth ready to replace it, underlying it. That's the benefit of that hollow tooth. Yeah, they're a pretty well adapted species. They're here. They've been here before we were here, and they'll probably be here long after we're gone. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for telling us all about alligator biology and what makes the species unique. And thanks to your model for being on display for us. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It was our pleasure. <laughs> thank you.